Toughened, skilled, easy under discipline, our men knew they were ready. I had my vendetta to fight. I went with them because I wanted to get in the middle of it, because to me, if I could get back there, I had people who were in concentration camps, people who died, etc., etc., and I was very angry. I was an angry kid. So what Uncle Sam did for me was he trains me, he gives me the, the weapons, he gives me the transportation to go over there and fight my own vendetta. In the late spring of 1944, the build-up began for the D-Day invasion of Hitler's Europe. The exact date and location of the invasion were top secret information given to only a few people. Among them was C-47 pilot Adam Parsons. He would be one of the first to fly into Normandy. I was put in a compound so that I couldn't speak to anyone because of the knowledge that I had of where the drop zones were. I never knew there were that many boats, landing craft, ships, barges, trucks, and jeeps anywhere in the world, but they seemed to all be drawn as a magnet right to southern England. The prospect was both terrifying and exhilarating. The C-47s and their crews were about to play a leading role in one of the most dramatic events of the 20th century. They were about to make history. Being young and gung-ho, you know, I wanted part of the action. We knew that nothing like this had ever happened. I was glad that I was part of it. If I had to be somewhere, I was glad I was there. They took us to a sealed airport where nobody was allowed in and none of us allowed out. We knew there was something cooking now, something big. Invasion markings painted on every ship and glider brought the whole thing even closer to us. We'd soon be on our way. The objective of the American 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions was to protect the right flank of the invasion and prevent German forces from reaching Utah Beach. Flying in from the west, the paratroops would jump on drop zones located around the small town of saint mer Eglise, south of Cherbourg. 17,000 paratroops were to be dropped at night ahead of the seaborne invasion force. It was to be the largest airborne operation ever undertaken. Once on the ground, the paratroops had to be entirely self-sufficient. Each man was festooned with a mountain of special equipment. It was a formidable list. One jumpsuit, boots, gloves, May West, main parachute, reserve parachute, rifle, 45 automatic pistol, trench knife, jump knife, hunting knife, machete. One cartridge belt, two bandoliers, two cans of machine gun ammunition, one Hawkins mine capable of blowing off the track of a tank, four blocks of TNT, one entrenching tool, three first aid kits, two morphine needles, one gas mask, a canteen of water, three days supply of K rations, two days supply of D rations, six fragmentation grenades, one gammon grenade, one orange and one red smoke grenade, one blanket, one raincoat, one change of socks and underwear, two cartons of cigarettes, one helmet. Total weight, 120 to 130 pounds. When we jumped in combat, what we had on us was our only things that we owned in the entire world. That was our gear. And now we had a job to do. Now we were really ready. General Ike nearly tore his pants stepping over the barbed wire, but he didn't care. He wanted to talk to us. Ike had a lot of questions to ask. What's your name, soldier, he says. Where's your hometown? Eisenhower's decision to spend the final moments before the invasion with the paratroops reflected the importance of their mission. He knew that they had the toughest assignment of all, to be first into action. His advisors were predicting casualty rates as high as 80%. He inspected a few of the boys who really have to be tough. 
the Pathfinders. They go in ahead of all of us and plant signal markers so we can find a way. They live on a steady diet of danger. They took three men out of each company, and uh, we were trained as Pathfinders, and we would do the jumping together. We'd go in ahead of everybody. When we, when we arrived, like at St. Eric Lee's, there was nobody there. A few of the outfits got the idea they ought to show the Germans we had Indians in America. Here they are. Indians from the Loop, from Back Bay, and the Bronx. 